So um, with that, uh, we'll dive into it, uh, this, this general introduction here. And we'll start at the, uh, the most basic level. So what is AAAF? Um, at, at root, it is, uh, it, it is an acronym. It, it stands for this, this uh, the International Image Interoperability Framework. And because that is a, a real mouthful, um, you'll hear us generally refer to it um, as AAAF, or at least that's uh, in English what most people use as a shorthand. Um, but maybe more usefully, more interestingly, uh, what AAAF is, uh, is it's a model for presenting and annotating um, content like digital images and audiovisual files um, for making a consistent presentation uh, of all these different things. And when you do that, there are a lot of benefits that accrue to, um, to this uh, end of using open standards. But it's also important to point out that whenever we talk about AAAF, um, we're also very much talking about the community of people who make this work. So that's a community of software developers, but also um, library staff and museum professionals and curators, um, as well as the photographers and other people who um, are involved with the entire uh, process and pipeline of uh, making digital materials uh, available and putting them up online for people to work with. And to give you a sense of where this is all happening, um, we have this map. So there are hundreds of institutions that we know about around the world making use of AAAF. And um, there are certainly hundreds more that aren't represented here on this map. Um, in particular, I, I'll point out that the dots that you see here in blue are members of the AAAF consortium. And so those are institutions that uh, actually have taken the step of helping to financially support the work um, of doing outreach and presenting materials and things like this conference um, and doing work to um, help uh, integrate AAAF uh, at institutions around the world so um, that we get an even broader and more global base um, of support for this uh, open set of technologies. And this is a different view of that, uh, gives you a sense of some of the institutions that are making use of AAAF. So um, very large and small museums and galleries around the world, um, aggregators like Europeana, DPLA, the Internet Archive, Wikimedia Foundation, um, as well as uh, state and national libraries and very large scale and, and small scale uh, universities and research institutions as well. So that gives you a sense of who is making use of this, but um, maybe next let's, let's talk about why we need something like this. So um, why do we need AAAF? Well, if you're watching this, uh, if you're attending the conference this week, um, you're, you're probably um, on board with this notion um, that images and digitized materials are really fundamental carriers of information. They're so critical to the enterprise of um, making uh, cultural context more understandable. So presenting our own cultural context and those of uh, other cultures around the world and understanding how those things all fit together uh, and how they've evolved and interacted and intersected over time. So we've spent two generations in cultural heritage um, digitizing materials and putting them up online uh, for exactly that reason, because these are such important uh, ways of communicating. But in doing that, we've also created uh, a, a problem for ourselves. We've um, done this work, but we've done it individually and separately at all of these different institutions around the world. So we've, as a result, created this world of silos. Um, and if you look at this from the end user perspective, uh, what you end up with is a situation where you present the user with this really rich set of materials, but you make them kind of dive deep into a single place uh, and work with the materials and, and get familiar. And then they have to extricate themselves and kind of walk that tightrope uh, across the top to maybe another institutional's web portal um, and then dive deep and, and work with the materials there. And even though uh, a, a lot of these setups are very similar, we, we really give end users a very limited way of interacting with all these different things and the different silos that contain them. And this is a diagrammatic view of the same, the same issue. So we, we all have very similar tech stacks. We're doing very similar things in terms of storing images and audio and video materials on the web and then presenting those to our end users. But um, we're doing it all the same way, but we're all doing it separately and independently. So AAAF 
provides a solution to that. It is a set of open APIs uh, that um, make available a consistent way of, uh, of, of sewing together things across different institutions, presenting them um, in unified viewers and, uh, and other applications um, that help alleviate some of that burden on the end user. So probably the best way to go through this is uh, to give uh, a number of examples of how AAAF is used in production environments. These are real institutions, real use cases that are um, making extensive use of AAAF to solve real problems that they have. Um, so we'll go through a number of these and you can see the real interactions as we go through them. And the first one, kind of the most basic, the one that maybe the most people are familiar with um, is this idea of really deep zoom on very large images. Um, and so this, this particular example comes from Stanford University and it's a, it's a Japanese tax map. Um, you're actually meant to stand in the middle of it and to be able to read um, the, the, the elements that are surrounding you. And you can see there very briefly, uh, the photographer is, is uh, in this particular image. And, and that, that guy's name is Wayne and he's about two meters tall. So you can see that this map is enormous. It's, it's about four meters tall by three meters wide. And so digitizing something like that, you end up with um, gigabytes of information. And so instead of making users download uh, all of that information just to be able to work with it at a, at a useful resolution, AAAF provides a mechanism for delivering just enough high resolution information um, to fill the display richly, um, and then provides a mechanism for um, moving in and out of those different zoom levels, just as you would with a digitized uh, or Google Maps or something like that. But the same set of technologies can be used to do something really useful like this uh, comparison example. So this comes from the Leiden collection. Um, and this example shows uh, different kinds of imaging all interleaved together or um, woven together in this uh, image viewer. So this has a visual representation um, of, of the image as well as X-ray representation and infrared representation. So all these different spectra um, of information. And this is called a curtain viewer and it allows the user to look at how um, these different light spectra um, intersect in this viewer and it still allows for that deep zoom uh, capability. So you can get all the way in on a detail and see what it looks like in say X-ray versus infrared um, and examples like that. And of course, the AAAF APIs are also, also useful across different uh, sites and applications. So this is an example of a, an illuminated manuscript um, from the 15th century that um, actually had the illuminations cut out of it uh, and over the years ended up at a different institution. So you can see here, um, just in terms of raw distance, they're not all that far apart, both located in Paris. Um, but in terms of digital objects, you might as well be asking the end users to um, travel through different dimensions um, in terms of uh, reunifying these materials. But using uh, AAAF APIs, uh, Biblissima was able to create this uh, demonstration viewer that actually re connects the illustrations with the pages from which they were cut and allows you to interact with the images as they were originally meant to be seen and worked with. Um, so drawing those materials from across institutional boundaries into this uh, reunified interface. There's also um, elements built into AAAF that allow you to do things like searching within text. So if you have uh, translation or transcriptions or other text associated with an image, uh, you can search inside that text just as you would um, doing search inside of a PDF, for example. And annotation is how this is all accomplished. So. Um, this example shows uh, one really useful mechanism of, uh, of using annotation in an educational context. This comes from Harvard's edX course uh, on cell biology and cell chemistry. Uh, and it provides uh, these annotations that describe what's happening in these different components of a cell. Uh, and it shows them in their sort of natural um, uh, scale uh, relationship to each other. So uh, the end users, the students can, can explore what's happening in the cell and, and really see what's happening um, at the original resolution for all these different elements and see the, the text of the annotations describing what's happening. 
And that same set of capabilities uh, is also very usefully deployed in um, crowdsourcing. So this is one example that comes from the National Library of Wales uh, and their uh, crowdsourcing platform asks users uh, from the local communities to uh, identify people in the photographs, to uh, help determine what year the photograph was taken, to help identify where a photograph might have been taken um, nearby. And all of that is done um, and stored in, uh, in the AAAF annotation technology. And a new uh, capability that we've seen um, coming very much uh, out of some of the university and museum uh, communities um, is, is this idea of a guided viewing and guided tours of AAAF materials. So this is a tool called Exhibit um, that uh, came from St. Andrews and uh, the Nemesine um, uh, digital folks. Uh, and so this allows you to take multiple uh, AAAF assets, um, put them into this edited interface, and then turn that into a guided viewing experience for the end users. And there are a couple of different ways um, to make that work. Um, this example in this uh, screenshot here is an example of what's called scrolly telling. So the user just scrolls um, through the different parts of the page, and it then connects the annotations, the text elements over there on the left with different um, segments of these AAAF assets um, in the viewer over there on the right. And of course, this does wonders and it has provided so many different capabilities on the digital side of the world, but we're also seeing it um, enhancing in-person experiences as well. So this example comes from Boston College where um, there are these uh, two manuscripts presented in a display case, but there's also a digital representation of the objects available um, for users to explore uh, and work with and um, zoom in and out of presented there in a, uh, in a tablet uh, on the right. And because these things are all premised on the open standards uh, in the AAAF universe, um, they come with uh, like a, a lot of um, ability to port things uh, and to uh, really make use of the interoperability element of the AAAF acronym. So um, this is an example that comes uh, from the Indigenous Digital Archive, which uh, itself is a wonderful um, viewer uh, and connection point into uh, a lot of digitized materials. Um, from the National Archives and other places. Um, but in each case, uh, when they present these AAAF materials, they're also presenting um, the option for users to open them in different AAAF viewers. So this example you can see at the bottom um, allows users to open the same asset in the universal viewer um, or in the Mirador viewer, which allows for comparative viewing of multiple objects, for example. And uh, one of the things we're most excited about uh, is just in the last year or so, um, the AAAF universe uh, has expanded to encompass more than just digitized images. So um, you can now connect digitized audio or digitized uh, moving image materials um, to different uh, AAAF annotations and other capabilities. So there are examples that, uh, that run a whole gamut um, of examples um, from something like something simple like transcriptions or automated captioning, um, all the way to more interactive um, tools that let you work with and annotate uh, musical compositions, for example. Um, but this this that I uh, the screenshot that I'll play in just a second here, um, I think does a really nice job of elegantly. Um, integrating the ability to uh, have a recorded guided viewing experience um, that moves the user through different sections of a uh, high resolution image while still allowing the end user to explore on their own, for example, and to move and uh, zoom on their own. Uh, you'll see how that works uh, here in just a second. I wanna take a look at one of my favorite maps that's been recently digitized at the Leventhal Center. This map isn't particularly rare or particularly ancient, but I love it because it captures a view of the Boston metropolitan region at a really interesting moment when trolley lines were fusing together what had previously been independent cities and towns and reshaping how people experienced the regional landscape. This map is called a trolley wayfinder, and it shows a bird's eye view of trolley routes in New England. 
And so that example, I should say, is, uh, is an example of a technology called Movie Maps, and it comes from the Leventhal Map Center, and it's, it's just been uh, released in the first set of um, example uh, Movie Maps that they've uh, presented, like this one that you just saw about the trolley wayfinding. Um, I think that just works very nicely in terms of uh, presenting users um, a, a nice guided access points to AAAF materials. I want to take a look at so now that we've given a, kind of a good high level overview of some of the use cases of AAAF and the ways that um, institutions are making use of this in, in production instances all over the world, um, maybe let's take a, a different look at uh, how it actually works and some of the underpinning concepts. So uh, at root, AAAF uh, really makes use of uh, this concept of application programming interfaces or APIs. You've probably heard of that before. And what an API is, um, is a structured way of connecting systems. It is a contract about how data will work when presented between two parts of a system. Um, and as long as that contract holds, as long as both ends of the agreement um, are, are maintained uh, and that connection uh, is still viable, then you can do things like swap out the front end of a system uh, while keeping the back end. Um, and as long as the API um, presents the information in that same structured way, uh, this will all work um, pretty fluidly. Uh, or you can do the, the reverse and swap out the back ends while keeping the front end the same. And over time, um, as you may guess, uh, because the APIs provide that consistent and structured way of uh, communicating data, you can um, end up swapping out all the components of a system and, and still um, have that agreement hold. And as long as the APIs are understood, um, you can add on other components or work with um, different systems in different ways. And uh, the APIs provide a, um, a normalized way of working with those elements. So this is a view into how that notion of an API works in, in the context of an individual institution. And in this case, uh, the, the layer of AAAF APIs um, makes it possible to uh, work with uh, images into a customized um, application um, to work with uh, annotations that are stored in a particular environment. But where the magic really kind of happens is in the context of multiple institutions. So you see here, all these institutions making the same making the use of all the same set of open APIs um, really starts to uh, make possible a variety of interactions and capabilities that weren't there before. Um, so uh, institutions being able to work with um, digitized assets from their own collections and also being able to draw in um, related works from other IIIF compliance uh, institutions, being able to uh, add and store annotations about those materials, no matter, regardless of where they're stored, whether it's a local um, digitized material or um, pulled in from another institution. Um, so you get the sense here that uh, that, that layer really provides that consistency um, across uh, not just one institution, but across all these different capabilities um, uh, ecosystem-wide. And in the AAAF context, this really rests on this notion of the two core AAAF APIs. So we have the image API, which as it sounds, um, literally delivers the, the pixels um, uh, via simple RESTful web service uh, and allows you to manipulate um, images using URL parameters. Um, and then that works in conjunction with the presentation API, which uh, provides just enough metadata and structure to drive a really compelling viewing experience. So uh, you can see here, this uh, diagram of the image API um, shows you some of the transformation. So you can do things like regioning of an image, um, rescaling that region, rotation, um, uh, reflection, also possibly changing the quality, so delivering grayscale or black and white um, versions of an image. And all of that is done here with segments of this URL. So you can see this example um, URL for an image and all those different sections between the, uh, the slashes um, are showing you how you would manipulate uh, the aspects of the AAAF image API. Uh, and this works consistently across you know, any image delivered uh, through a IIIF image API server. 
And that then works with the presentation API. So the presentation API um, delivers things like structure, which would mean the order of pages in a book or um, the order of songs on a mixtape, um, things like that. And then combining that with really basic um, properties, things like description, um, labels, licensing, attribution, and links to um, other metadata elements. So AAAF really, works with just about any metadata standard. It is not itself a metadata standard. It doesn't dictate um, how any of these things um, work other than being able to pull data from uh, a lot of different places. Um, so it can really cross uh, different um, software components and uh, institutional image management systems or repositories, things like that. And this is probably a useful way to see how they get put together. So um, over there on the right, you can see in that blue box uh, is the actual deep zoomable asset itself. And that set of pixels is what's being delivered by the image API. And then on the left and at the bottom there, you can see the elements that are delivered by the presentation API. So the things like uh, what's labeled there, the title label, the structure, in this case, the table of contents for a sketchbook, um, the sequence of the images that should appear. So that order of the uh, thumbnails down there at the bottom, um, those are all specified in the presentation API. And then one other thing I guess I'll say about this image uh, as an added element on top of all of that is that the thumbnails themselves, while the order is specified by the presentation API, the thumbnails themselves are being drawn by the image API. So again, another integration of these two um, API elements. And there are two other elements, uh, two other APIs um, in the AAAF universe right now. Um, there is the search API uh, that allows you to search within text that is associated with uh, an image or a newspaper, um, whatever it might be. Um, and then there is something called the authentication API, um, which supports a couple of different um, mechanisms for login or other authentication. Um, in, in cases where say um, only on site or only um, authorized users should be able to see the complete resolution of an image, whereas uh, otherwise maybe a smaller version of an image is delivered. Um, or if there's sensitive materials that requires a click through um, agreement, the authentication API can work with those kind of interaction patterns. And I'll also just mention that there are some other API elements in the works that are not yet fully baked, but should be um, on their way in the coming months. So there um, is work being done in the discovery domain to do things like um, presenting how uh, AAAF assets and materials have changed over time, um, as well as, uh, as um, other discovery elements being able to um, deliver links and search results that, uh, that link to specific portions of images and, uh, and AAAF annotations. Um, so there's also work being done to update the search API and the authentication API to work with the latest iterations uh, of the 3.0 um, image and presentation APIs. And there are presentations on all of the things I just mentioned um, happening at the conference here this week. So if you're interested, um, please take a look in the agenda for that. And so that basically brings us to the end of, uh, of this kind of high level introduction to the world of AAAF. Um, what I'll conclude with here is, is just a few comments on how to get involved, how to get started working with and um, interacting with the AAAF community. And the great news is um, that you are already doing the, the first and most important step. Um, this Everyone we talk to who has uh, kind of gotten um, more familiar with the AAAF community has said that attending events really was the, uh, the best on-ramp for them. And so uh, you're attending the conference this week, that's great. We encourage you to attend a community call. There are lots of different groups within the AAAF community working on different aspects, things like manuscripts or newspapers um, or maps or um, different search technologies. Um, there's definitely a spot for you, maybe in the museum community group. Um, we encourage you to look at the variety of content that's happening this week and, and find the right um, segment of the community that, uh, that might be, um, a good fit for you and your work. So we also have um, 
a uh, an email discussion list uh, that that allows people to uh, talk through issues and, and uh, solve technical complications. And then we have a, a newsletter. That's a great way of um, understanding how uh, the, the AAAF community is working on uh, new collections and new uh, software components for displaying uh, materials and presenting them in new, interesting, new and interesting ways. We have a really robust and friendly um, Slack channel that we would love to have you join um, where it's a great way to, to kind of stay apprised of the latest uh, things happening in the community. Um, the cookbook is a really useful way. Uh, we have what's called the AAAF cookbook uh, of best practice recipes. So uh, this is a relatively new effort uh, of trying to document the best practices around really common AAAF use patterns. So um, the, the best way to present uh, just a single book uh, in AAAF or the best way to present um, annotations on moving image and audio materials, the best way to present um, AAAF captions for, um, for video materials, things like that. Um, so it's developing every month, we're adding new recipes. Uh, so that's a great place to look if you have a particular use case that you're looking to solve. And then beyond that, um, obviously, you know, working with AAAF and exposing your collections is, is the best way to uh, enhance the community and, and help it grow even um, larger than it has been in years. Um, using AAAF compatible software is a great way to do that or writing your own. Um, a lot of this for a lot of folks um, is connected to working with their software vendors, their software suppliers um, to become AAAF compatible and to add to the ecosystem of, of things that work with a AAAF uh, compliant universe. Um, and finally, I'll say too that uh, really the best possible way to ensure the continued evolution um, and the longevity of this open set of technologies is to join the AAAF consortium. So that uh, really helps us do the work of, uh, of reaching out to new parts of the world, reaching out to new domains, making sure that um, that when you know we update a, a set of tools, that the most uh, the largest set of people will find out about it. That the people who need um, you know uh, help building an ecosystem around a certain domain um, can get the support that they need. So um, joining the AAAF consortium is a really critical way um, that your institution can help us um, make sure that AAAF is, uh, is, is a viable um, and useful thing for your institution for years and years to come. And so this last piece here is just a, a quick snapshot and view into some of the open and uh, vendor supported technologies um, that make the AAAF ecosystem work. Um, this is by no means uh, comprehensive or exhaustive, but just to give you a small sense of all the different ways that uh, the AAAF has, uh, has made its way into um, different elements of the cultural, uh, cultural heritage sector. And so, yeah, we'll leave we'll leave you with um, that uh, element, that that exciting um, uh, a bit of promise. Just uh, hope to have given you a great sense of, of the hundreds of adopters around the world. Um, hope to urge you to add your collections to the more than a billion digital objects that we know about already. Um, and that's growing every day and every week um, and really helping us to build on this, uh, this promise of a uh, really bright AAA future. So we'll leave it there. Um, as I mentioned at the top, there is a, a Q and A section uh, on the Whova application where we're happy to answer your questions about getting started with AAAF or more in depth um, specific questions. We'll find a way to get you the right information. Um, but most of all, I just wanna say thank you for joining us here today. Um, thanks for joining us at the conference this week and uh, please keep in touch and let us know how uh, AAAF is useful to you and your use cases and your institution. Thanks so much.